Welcome to Hot Take Thursday, where Andrea and I answer a listener question that is related to the episode we released on Tuesday, except we are totally unedited and unfiltered. We may not be right, but we have an opinion. Yeah, this is Jess's favorite day, and every time that you say that, I, my heart starts to beat fast, but it's all this right. Is my absolute favorite day. I yeah. love today. Yes, bring it on. So on Tuesday, we were talking about therapy and coaching, a little bit about therapy versus coaching, some highs and lows, pros and cons. So I'm guessing we're answering a question about one of those two things today. Yes, we are. And okay, here is our listener question, which came from our Facebook group. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. So if you have not joined our Facebook group, go on Facebook, look for the Honest Women Podcast community, and you can join. And one of the great things about joining is you also get the opportunity to put in there a question that you want us to answer. Mm -hmm. One of our Facebook group members put in a question that was spot on when it came to therapy and coaching. So Mm -hmm. we're going to use that today. Yeah, girl. With me adding, dear honest women. Dear honest women. I love the sound of that. Okay. This listener wants to know, what should I look for and how do I evaluate finding a therapist for myself, but also for my child? And now she digs into, it's a, it's pretty There's a lot of content, but what Mm -hmm. she really digs into, I want to highlight, and that is her fear of connecting her child with a therapist who does not keep her in the loop, Mm -hmm. does not give her some information, or does not work with her. So kind of coach her as well on how to work with her child and how do I make sure that the therapist's values align with our families? And if they don't, how do I make sure it doesn't become a therapist telling my child what to think, feel, or believe? Oof. Okay, Uh so I hear three questions. So can we start first with how do we find a good therapist for me? Because Um, these are a little different. Because I want you to answer that question for me as well. Oh, okay. So the most important thing, and this is what I tell clients who call me or send me a message and want to work with me, is we have to do a vibe check. I know this sounds funny, but it is, in fact, the most important factor in finding a therapist or a coach. Like, do you like this person? Do you feel like you would look forward to spending an hour in a room with them every week? And do you believe that they can help you? So for me, number one is like vibe check. Do I like you? Do I believe in you? And also for me, do I trust your training and your experience. You know what I hear you say Mm -hmm. is trust your intuition, trust your gut. Like when you are having a conversation with the person on the end of the phone or in person, what is your body telling you? Mm -hmm. Not your mind, but your body. And mine is always spot on. Either I feel really good or there's something within me that's saying, "Mm, I don't know. Right. This is so important for women, especially because I think so many of us are people pleasers and we feel uncomfortable. If I send an email to somebody or I have that first 15 minute consultation, I feel bad if I don't set up an appointment with them. Or I feel bad if I see them for two or three sessions, but I find myself going like, I don't want to be here or I don't really feel good here. I think a lot of times women will stay in relationships, including with a therapist or with a coach, because they feel bad to leave them. But this is so important. You will not get better if you don't vibe with your therapist or with your coach. Oh, that is such a good point. Okay. I'm going to give my hot take Thursday on the whole values piece. Okay. Okay. I'm scared. Because I I have thoughts. I we might not too. agree. We're going to go toe to toe. We might. I think we'll probably agree more. You know me. I'm always Switzerland in an annoying way sometimes, right? However, here's my thought when it comes, because I have coached a lot of parents on what to do and, mm-hmm. and kind of how to respond when they're looking for a therapist for your child. Mm-hmm. First off, be direct and don't be afraid to ask. All questions are fair game Yeah. when it comes to looking for a therapist for your very vulnerable 
child. Mm -hmm. No question is off limits. Mm -hmm. And any therapist who reacts as if that question is inappropriate is a red flag to me. Also, when you get off the phone, here's where, I don't know if we'll agree on this or not, um, but when you get off the phone, you shouldn't actually know where you're th- where that therapist aligns. They totally. should make you feel like everything is acceptable, right? right? So if you're leaning towards one thing, they should cultivate a space mm-hmm. for your value system, yeah. regardless of what theirs is. If they start preaching their own, run. Right. I agree. For me, when I was looking for a therapist for my child, the number one only thing I cared about was their competence. And so I went to the person who happened to lead the Illinois Association of Play Therapists. I was like, for my kid, give me the fucking best, okay? And here's something you all need to know is that therapists who go to graduate school generally, like they are not qualified to work with your children. Correct. They need to have advanced training. If they're young in the field, they need to be working with a a person who is certified or extremely trained. They need to be working on a regular basis to know what they're doing. So for me, that was what mattered. Here's why. Because values are not like that has nothing to do with what the, the work that they're going to do. So, Correct. you know, if you have a child under 12, they should be doing play therapy. They They should not be initiating any sort of values conversation with your child. Honestly, there's not a lot of conversation in play therapy with young children. It's working on skill building. It's a, it's a lot different. So if you have a young child, take them to the appropriate type of therapist, make sure that therapist knows what they're doing and really values there should not enter the conversation. Okay. Here's where we might not agree. Okay. On values. Uh, <sighs> I'm nervous. Okay. And I hope that the listener who submitted this hears this with love. Okay. If you are taking your kid to a therapist with the hope that the therapist will reinforce your values, with the hope that the therapist will say, this thing that you're struggling with, you should be heading in this direction or that direction. And I'm thinking mm-hmm. specifically, like, if you have a religious or spiritual view, let's say you have a kid who's you want to take them to therapy because I'm just going to go for it. Okay. It's hot take Thursday. Let's say you have a kid that's struggling with their sexuality or if they brought something up to you about their sexuality and you're a parent who's like, what? This does not vibe with my value system at all. I'm taking them to therapy. And your hope is to find a therapist who will come in and provide a second hammer to say, this is what we believe. I don't think you should go to a therapist for that. I think I don't like that. I think in some ways as a parent, if you take your child to a therapist, especially when we're talking about older kids now, they're teens and they get a little older, you should expect that they're going to work out whatever is on their mind and that the therapist shouldn't be there acting as a second authority figure to reinforce a belief system. That's my red flag that goes off when I hear that question, how do I know a therapist aligns with my values? I'm like, well, are you expecting the therapist to reinforce your values or have some sort of moral stance? Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. This is where we disagree a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, you're right on that. Because here's the deal is when I'm looking for a therapist for I don't have a teen, but if I did have a teen, I have a preteen, I also want an adult in the room. Meaning Mm -hmm. my teen who may think X, Y, and Z, that's great. I want somebody to challenge their way Mm -hmm. of thinking though, to say, how did you get there? Mm -hmm. And I have a big problem with how we do therapy nowadays and basically Mm -hmm. just telling a child and a teenager that whatever they're thinking and feeling is right. right. And I think we've gotten into a major problem as a society by telling a teenage brain that what they're thinking and feeling is accurate. So I agree. from a value system standpoint, I want somebody who actually allows critical thinking to happen right. in and a I- therapy office. And I think that like when we talk about, it's hard because that's a hot topic with sexuality. It is. It's a hot but topic. I it's don't hot take agree Thursday. with how, I know, and I do not agree with how we're handling it as a society at yeah. all. 
because we have an underdeveloped brain who is very vulnerable to messaging. Mm -hmm. So I understand what this listener is asking asking. And really, I, I read a lot of fear into it is Mm -hmm. when my child is questioning things, how are you going to handle it? Are you going to tell them that whatever they're thinking and feeling is right? Uh, Or, or are you going to help identify how they got there? Yeah. And when you can tell me how you got there, that is where like the real work lies. Yeah. And working with some teens, again, it's on a limited basis. They have no freaking idea how they got right. there. I will tell you that half the time it's because Sally Sue told them to think and feel that way. I want a therapist who can challenge that. Yeah. And to me, that's more a style thing instead yeah. of a, it's more of a therapeutic approach question instead of a values question. Listen, if you want someone who's going to second your values, you can find someone who is, for example, in this in this case, we might say opposites. A you know a Christian therapist or a faith based therapist or someone you know who is going to espouse those values or someone who says I am an LGBTQIA affirming. This is the the core issue, and you're like, I feel so scared about my child going into a room with an adult. And that I don't know, and I am afraid that this person will put their values onto my child, then I really think that you do want to find someone who aligns with your views. I just caution any parent against, especially when it's a values question, expecting a therapist to behave in a certain, to achieve a certain outcome. Right. If your goal of therapy on that, yeah, like you do not control the outcome as a parent. However, from a value system, and I know the state of Illinois is very, I don't agree with how we do things. Mm -hmm. We give kids a lot more confidentiality than I think we should. But I also, from a value system, believe in the importance of family. Yeah. And so when she's talking, this listener is talking about values and kind of the line of questioning, I hear more, how can I make sure the therapist keeps me informed? Yeah. And I personally navigate this conversation all the time because Mm -hmm. I work with teens with grief. And all parents want to know, I'm telling you, it's a few things. They want to know that their kid is okay and that they're doing okay. Those are the only things. And we cut off so much conversation. And I have parents all the time saying, thank you for being yeah. open with me. And I tell them, well, right. And just so you know, your teen also knows that I'm open with you. Right. They trust me to be open with you. And I believe that whatever we talk about in this office, while the content is not necessarily what needs to be discussed, I need to talk to those parents. Yeah. I need them to work with me to assist their teen. Right. And that whole cutting off connection with the family, that's where I just have a hard time and I see it happen a lot. And maybe that's a question this listener can ask. How do you work with the family? Right. right? If I have a 15 year old, how do you, how do we have conversation? I know you can't tell me everything, but how can you keep me informed? Yeah. And that you do a beautiful job of doing this in your own work. Like everything you just said, I'm like, I wanted to snap. I want to say, preach, sister. I know when I was working with my young child in therapy, involving the parent was part of the therapy. Now, like you said, there are limits. This is the point of therapy is confidentiality to be able to have space to work things out. And there are limits to what can be talked about. And like Jessica said, your questions need to be, is my child safe? Am I doing all right? Is there something we could work on at home? How can I support the work you're doing here? However, there are lots of parents, and this is why lots of people stop working with kids and teens. I have a lot of friends who started with kids and teens who are like, fuck that. Because what you end up doing is you have a parent who wants to know every detail, Mm-hmm. They want a like full rundown, which we are not allowed to do. Like we cannot do that. And it damages the work. Like if you want to know the full details of everything your kid would say, just like harass them at home. A therapist can't do that for you. There's no work that can be done if you want a full detail. And if you have tremendous anxiety around whatever it is that your child is dealing with, get your own therapist to support your stress. And believe me, as a parent, when my kid is struggling, 
I need support. And my support person is not my kid's therapist. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it makes perfect sense. And what is said inside the therapy room and half the time how I build rapport with my teens is they can tell me literally anything. I need a diary, Mm -hmm. right? And so telling them, telling a parent everything that's said is essentially the same as reading a child's diary, Mm -hmm. right? However, I can easily talk with a parent to say, they're doing okay. Yes. I promise you they're okay. Yeah. They're doing yeah. okay. And if I don't think they're okay, you will be the first call I make. Mm, I love that, Jess. I, I think we should stop there. I've got another idea. We're going to stop. It's the bad it. therapy. All, you know how we're talking about bad therapy coming up? We'll, we'll have to get into this later. Guys, if you are not following this podcast, uh, if you're not subscribed on YouTube, you're going to miss it. So You don't want to. No, we're like make sure really you... entertaining, so don't miss out. <laughs> and humble, obviously. <laughs> and this, my friends, is Hot Take Thursday. <laughs>